Hi, this is Nick with Triple Test Balloon Tools. Today we're going to be talking about the video test module. The video test module is a video module that attaches on the back of your LV Pro model 20, 30, and 30 SR. So the way to do that is, is that first you're going to want to want to look on the back here, you're going to take off the hinge here, that's the snap-on adapter, you're going to expose an RJ11 cable right here, you're going to take the cord over here, plug it right in. It also explains how to do this in your manual. Just snap it on the top, put it on the bottom, and then you just screw it down, and it locks right in place. And once it's fully screwed down, you don't need to worry about it falling off at all. It makes a nice tight seal. You can actually grab it from here. You don't have to worry about getting damaged or lost. It stays on there nice and firmly like it's one piece, uh, one unit. So now that we have the video test module attached, let's kind of talk about what kind of features does it do. There's seven different tests that this monitor does. Um, some of the things you're going to do is HDMI testing, which allows you to see if it's a good HDMI cable or a bad HDMI cable. You're going to get a pass or fail on that. You're also going to know what type of pins are actually connected to that HDMI cable because not all HDMI cables are made the same. So therefore, you're going to need to know that. Um, so when this actually displays um, a cable, it's actually going to tell you cable one through five. And on there, you can look on your chart that's actually in the video test module manual, and it'll actually tell you what pins are actually connected. So I'll show you that test in a little bit. The next test is a DDC read test. That actually gets connected to a monitor that you may have and actually kind of just gives you a pass or fail. If you get a fail, that means that you know that there's actually a problem with the monitor or with the cable. If you get a pass, you know that the monitor is working properly and that the cable is working properly. So it's just a really quick and easy test to do that with. Then you got the HDMI um, pattern test, which you can also do with a monitor. So it'll actually display a little display on here so you can actually see what the monitor is doing, see if it's actually working properly in a, in a physical way instead of an um, electronic way where you can do in the previous test. The next test is using the coax F button, uh, connector on here and using the remote. By using the remote, you can actually test um, DB levels that are coming through. In case you have different splitters on the line, you can see how many splitters you have by the DB loss. Or you can also map it out like um, this comes with one remote, but you can purchase up to four. So you can actually map out a whole system if you need to. So you can measure that. Also on here, you got the CATV broadband level test. That's done the same way through the coax F. And now you just plug that into wall. So let's say you have a uh, broadband uh, cable provider at your house. You can actually measure the DB level coming into your home or measure to make sure that it's working properly because that's a lot of causes for faults on poor signal coming in the building. Um, after that, there's two more tests. You got the BNC that's using at the top, and that's for the SDI test. You can use the monitor, I mean the remote as well for that. And you can actually measure the DB levels of an SDI signal coming through and also map them as well with the remotes. Um, and the last test is just a measurement of the SDI signal directly into the device, so that obviously means that there's no remote on the other end, so you can plug like an SDI cable, um, connect to a camera, or connect to a monitor, and kind of see what that level does in there. So now that I've kind of gone through all the different tests, let me actually show you how they work. So first thing you're going to want to do is turn on your LV Pro. And just for this demonstration, I'm going to turn on the backlit display. You can easily see it. And then to get to the different test functions on here, you'll still have the same screen that you have traditionally on your LV Pro, but if you scroll to the right or left, you'll get this flashing X. And that flashing X means that you're actually in the expansion module. So you're just going to press OK, and you can see that you have seven tests. So then you can go up and down with the arrows and kind of go through the different tests. So the first test I'm going to do is the HDMI test. So I have my HDMI cable right here, just a standard HDMI cable. I'm going to plug it in the top port right here, right there, and then use my remote on the other end to be able to identify all the different pins in the HDMI cable and let me know if it's a good cable or not. So I'm going to press OK, the hammer's going, letting you know the test is being done. It says that it's uh, connected to remote 1 and that it's cable 1. What does it mean when it says cable 1? Well, if you go back to the map graph I was talking about earlier, is that there's all different types of different type of cables and it actually tells you what type of cable it is. So it says it's cable type 1. Cable type 1 means that it has all pins, all 1 through 18 pins connected on there. So you know you actually have a really good HDMI cable. Doesn't mean if you go look and you have a cable 2, 3, or 4 and you have a few pins missing, does that mean it's a bad cable? No, it just means it's made to a different standard. So as long as it works properly for your installation, that's fine. But generally, a, a cable 1 means that all the pins that are in this cable are connected properly. So once you're done with that test, you can unplug it. And we'll go on to the next test, which is cable test two. You'll just press exit. You go back down to video two for the testing. And it's just a pass or fail. Like I said, you'll just plug right into a monitor that I have here. 
and it's just going to display on the uh, LV Pro. It's going to give you a pass or fail, and it's going to tell you um, the ID number of the monitor. Um, the number is really not that important. It says 6120 on here. That's just the ID number of the remote of the monitor, and that's a manufacturer's process that they have that for. But the key thing here is that it says that it's passed. What that means is that it's actually getting a good signal from the monitor and that they're communicating back, back and forth properly. So now you're done with that test. You can press exit. You go on to the third test. And the third test is actually the, uh, is the test pattern test. So I'll actually plug it back in here. And this will actually show a, vis a visible uh, display on here with a VGA signal. So now that the hammer's going, you can see right here on this monitor that you got a color bar and you got the triple logo in the background. So you know that there's actually this cable's working well and it's actually this monitor's working well. So it's actually displaying the logo right on here. So it's sending that signal from this to here and it's, as you can see, it's being displayed very easily. So we'll exit out of that. Now we get to the test four. This is kind of where you use the CATV test. So I have a little box here for testing. As you can see, I have different ID remotes and I have different DB levels. So I just have one remote, so all the tests are just going to show up with one when it identifies it. So we're just going to plug it into the second one. And the second one says remote ID 2, but we have number one plugged in, and it says that the dB range should be 16 to 18 dB. This remote puts out a signal about 50 dB. Anything less than that tells you that there's switches in between, so that's how you can easily map. And so once you have a good idea how much a dB miss that you're getting every time you add a switch, you can get an idea how many different switches are on the line. So I'm going to go down to my test 4. I'm going to plug in here. You want to make sure that you screw that on, make sure it's a nice and tight connection so you don't need false reads. I'm going to press OK on the tester. And the tester is going to tell me that it's remote ID 1, which this one is, like I said, and that it says it's showing a DB signal of 17. Well, this one says it's supposed to be between 16 and 18, so it's exactly perfect. So if I unplug this and I go over to the first ID remote, it says it's supposed to be between 37 and 39. Now it says that it's showing a DB signal of 37, and then I'm still connected to remote one. Um, we sell additional uh, remotes as well, so if you had three others plugged in here, it show remote one, this, remote two, this, remote three, that, remote four, that. So you can easily map out the process in your house. So after that test, you can exit out of there. And the next test is test five, where you can actually plug this into, a, um, into the wall outlet in a house or in a building to kind of see if there's any DB level actually coming in from that jack. Is it a live, cat, uh, is it a live coax F jack? So if you have, um, say, broadband internet coming across that line, or you have cable TV coming across, you'll be able to see if it's actually live. And if it doesn't actually display anything, that's when you know it's dead. There's no signal going to it, so you might have to reroute that. But if it displays a, a DB level, you can be guaranteed that it's actually a, a signal's coming across, but obviously it's got to be in the right parameters. If it's too low, then that signal's not going to be produced on that television. And if it's too high, that's going to cause issues as well. So you're going to want to check that, what the parameters are. So as you move on to test um, six, that's when you get into the SDI testing. So you'd still use the remote, you still use the connector up here. So let's say you had an SDI cable coming through um, the wall and it had signals going through. You could easily test or map that. So let's say you had multiple jacks. You're in the one service room with there's only one jack. You can plug these remotes around and you can feed that all back into here and it'll tell you if it's cable one, cable two, cable three, and what are the readings on that cable. So you can easily identify what you need to do. And then on the last test, you still use the BNC and it's still an SDI signal test, but it's built mostly for type of uh, just one end. So you just kind of want to see what the DB level is of one end of that cable. So let's say if you have an SDI camera, and you want to make sure that there's actually a signal coming out of there. Well, you can plug this in, you can easily test um, the cable to make sure that it's working properly, and you can test the camera if it's working properly, if you get a signal across here. Well, thank you for watching this video on the video test module. If you have any questions, please feel free to walk, go to our website and learn a little bit more about this, uh, this tester. Thank you for watching.